things, but tell us a little bit more about your book. So you mentioned that you had written a book and what is, yeah, what is it about? And can it be helpful for somebody who is navigating this situation for the first time? Um, so, uh, uh, yes and no. So my, my book is, is catastrophic impairment laws. So I basically compared the various insurance regimes throughout the province of, the can of Canada. And I was wanting to see if any of the laws had discriminatory applications based on geography that impacted but sort of marginalized groups. And my, my inspiration for that book was um, a client that I represented recently who I got a catastrophic impairment designation. This was an Indigenous girl, a teenage girl, mother of one, uh, a disabled infant. Um, and she sustained a, a very bad accident, a very catastrophic traumatic brain injury. And I thought she met the criteria for catastrophic impairment designation. I thought it was pretty straightforward. Um, mm -hmm. the, doctors I, the doctor I retained um, thought so as well, a neuropsychologist with a PhD. The neurologist that the insurance company retained also thought that, that she met the criteria, but the insurance company uh, took advantage of a bureaucratic glitch in the legislation to deny my client the cat designation. So again, so one of those things when I kind of sense that imbalance of power really pulls my heartstrings. And yeah. I, I fought for her, dug deep, um, looked at the evolution of the catastrophic impairment designation from the 1990s to the present. I interviewed the doctors who, who, who gave recommendations to the Minister of Finance um, and also, you know, who the legislatures relied upon while drafting the bill, which ultimately led to the, to the, to the, to the act. Um, and I, I ultimately persuaded the insurance company to overturn that decision. Um, wow. But for me, it wasn't enough because I, I started thinking, well, what else, like how many other people in the future, how many other children who sustain traumatic brain injuries in the future are they going to take advantage of and exploit that, that bureaucratic glitch I mentioned? So it was one of those, those situations where, you know, um, for me, the retainer I have of a client, you know, that's great. And I got a good result for my client and her family. Um, but I felt my, my duty, you know, extended beyond my client to the larger community. So I took it upon myself to change the law. And I did. I, I brought attention to it. I got media involved. I brought politicians involved. I brought legal legal um, uh, uh, organizations involved, like Outlaw. Um, and I, I got um, to sit down at the table with the Financial Services Regulatory of Authority of Ontario, which regulates the, the, the Insurance Act. And they agreed to amend the guideline and get rid of that bureaucratic glitch. So um, yeah. after I did that, I said, I want to write about this. And then I was curious. I said, well, this was a problem that existed in Ontario. And then I got to thinking, well, wait a minute, this other problem is in Canada and, and territories. Yeah. It, it, was this just a provincial issue in my province or was this a national issue? So that was